So a few videos ago, I mentioned how if you're doing angle work on a sign check, you can use a gauge pen to determine the distance from the top of the pen to the corner of your sign chuck, and then ultimately how much stock is remaining on your angled feature. And uh, I suppose I just brushed over it, and a few people have asked me to elaborate. And the whole purpose of this channel is for me to be a better communicator, so that seems like a good idea. So again, the, the concept is, placing a gauge pen, you would use your height measuring device and find the top of it, and then do a little math to determine the distance from the top of the gauge pen to the corner of the sign chuck. And then you would see how much higher your part is than the corner of the sign chuck, and if that correlates with the, the print or CAD model. This feature, or this concept, is also useful in the mill. You can find the center of the gauge pen and then top, and then use that to locate the corner and uh, use that to uh, put in milled features and holes and precision work on the mill. And you don't have to own and use something like this corner finder. Um, so useful on the mill, useful on the grinder. And uh, I think you'll see the math behind it isn't, isn't all that bad once you break it into small chunks. So let's look at the math. And I hesitate to do this because I was a, a terrible math student and I'm still really not good at it. Like in my calculator, I have to keep trig cheat sheets because even with all the mnemonic devices, I can't can't ever seem to remember them correctly. So, uh, but here I am. So let's see if we can get through it. So first thing I like to do with the math problem in trig is make an assessment of the info I have. So here's the problem we're trying to solve. Find the top of our gauge pin to the corner of the sign chuck. We know the tilt angle, and we know the radius of the gauge pin, which in turn tells us how far the center of the gauge pin is from the fence and from the sign chuck. So with the radius knowledge, we can figure out what this angle is. And you could approach that with the Pythagorean theorem, but in trig, it would just be the radius divided by the sine of 45. Once we're armed with that knowledge, we can draw another triangle. And so we now know what length C is, and if we could solve length B, we're there. So we just have to figure out what this angle is in order to solve length B. So we know that from length C to this radius line is 45 degrees, and basic geometry tells us that this little segment is just angle A. So 45 degrees minus angle A gets us that angle. And once we're there, or once we have all that info, we can solve for B, and then we just add this radius on the top, and we have our, our distance. So in the calculator, uh, let's pretend that angle A is 10 degrees and the radius is 1.5 millimeters. It would be uh, 1.5 divide by the sine of 45, and that tells us length C, times the cosine of 45 degrees minus 10 plus 1.5. And so we now know that the top of this three millimeter roll pin to the corner is 3.237 millimeters. So when you break it into small chunks like that, it, it's very approachable in my opinion. And this is coming from a non-math student. So let's see what this looks like on some practical applications. So you can also build this out in Excel and uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, we'll just plug in that equation we used earlier. So G2 is the roll diameter. So half of that's our radius divided by the sine of 45 and then we multiply that by the cosine of 45 minus the sine plate angle and then we add one radius. Uh, so exactly what we plugged into the calculator just formatted for Excel a little and um, yeah, just easy enough to build in some spreadsheet. So we're you're using that 10 and 3 millimeter we used earlier but we could try 15 and a quarter inch roll and uh, pretty painless to do it this way also. So yeah, give Excel or Google Sheets a try. So here's the part that has the angled feature we'll be measuring. 
I wanted to take a quick second and talk about grinder ergonomics. As I'm grinding this, you can see how much my hand is flexing on the wheel. There's a way to position your part on the chuck so that your, your wrist has the least amount of discomfort. And what you're trying to do when you set up your grinder is have your arm be tangent to the crank wheel. You do not want the line of your arm bisecting the center line of that crank wheel. And so by sliding the fixture down the chuck a little, you see my wrist stays straight rather than flopping all over the place. And a career of grinding, this can really help alleviate micro trauma and discomfort. And uh, you won't feel pain in your wrist at the end of the day if you're a little more conscious about how you place your fixtures. So 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock and 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock are the sweet spots for me when I short stroke parts. Uh, anything, like you see, as my wrist gets closer to the center line, the more it flexes. And that's going to that's gonna cause you problems. So just figure out what's comfortable for you and what holds your wrist in the natural position. Okay, so we're over on our height measuring system. And I have a very accurate pin. And I'm going to zero off on the top of it. And uh, we'll, we'll input the height. And this is that, that height we found earlier, the 3.23768. And now we can just install our part and measure it. Um, now for the pen, um, this bar is a little too short for gauge pens. I always have uh, flat roller bearings lying around and the diameter and cylindricity of them is very, very good. So, they work in a pinch if you don't have a short enough gauge pen. So this is a little finger punch on stall. And we'll compare that number to the print size and uh, make adjustments on the grinder. So pretty, pretty reliable. And then the nice thing about this is we don't have to do any weird math on the grinder. Whatever stock amount we have left there, we just move the wheel head down. So uh, sometimes when you have angled parts or angled wheels, you you have to do a little trig even to remove the metal. So having everything on a one-to-one -one makes life easier. Another option you have is figuring out the exact size pin that coordinates with the flat you have. And so you could use it like you would zero a gauge block and to your part. So you zero your indicator on your, your pin that matches the height of your, your part on the print. And then you compare it to the part you're grinding. And so I can see I have a, a tenth of stock I got to remove yet. And um, that's, that's really handy if you're doing a lot of something. Thanks for watching to the end. One thing I wanted to address before it come up in the comment section is a lot of people I know would simply draw this out in CAD as a sketch and let CAD determine the height that they need to solve. And people would probably ask, why not just do that? Uh, I don't think it's a big deal, but in a lot of the shop environments I've worked in, the grind department, or if it's just purely a grinding shop, doesn't have a PC. Most grinding in our my world is, is manual grinding. It's very uncommon for a shop to have a CNC form grinder like mine. So you don't have a PC around with some kind of CAD software on it to do that sketch. And you need to be able to do basic math to, to arrive at those numbers. Um, the growing trend I've noticed is the machining content space gives a disproportionate view of what machining's like in the real world. And uh, there's a lot of shops with older machinery still doing work in the world. And that doesn't always get highlighted. Uh, it doesn't always rise to the top in terms of content. And uh, yeah, so just keep that in mind. You know, that might be a skill worth learning if, if you're going into a repair or tool and die route know how to do things without a computer. So that's all. Thanks for watching.